Hello and welcome to this video on Scrum within Microsoft Project. Today we're going to be looking at the new Agile features that have just been released in Microsoft's latest version, Microsoft Project 2016. So what I'm going to do is actually show you how to identify whether you do in fact have the latest version. To do this you're going to click on the project ribbon within Microsoft Project and in the property section you should see this Agile button. If you do not see the Agile button, you will need to upgrade to the latest software, either upgrade your subscription or purchase Microsoft Project 2016, the very latest version that contains these new updates. All right, so what I'm going to do is show you how to start from scratch and build a new Agile Scrum Microsoft Project schedule. So to start with, I'm actually going to go out to the template library that you can find in, in online for the online templates and I'm going to use this merger and acquisition one just to prove to you that you can do this with any schedule whether it's new, old or even if you start from scratch so here we go, I'll just open this one from Microsoft Online and you should all see that in your version as well so the very first thing I'm going to do is set the project start date to do that, click on project options sorry, project information and then come in here I'm going to set my start date to January 5th First. So we're not going to start this project until January 1st. You see all the dates will update accordingly. I'm just going to come into the durations and put a few default durations in here. You can see the, the default is actually one day. I'm just going to come through and put oops, uh, just put four or five days. Just to flesh out the schedule a bit and give it a bit more duration. That's irrelevant though. Alright, so the next step, we need to switch Agile on for this particular schedule. To do that from the project ribbon I'm going to click on Agile. In here you can see the methodology settings. So currently it's set to none and that is the default but I'm going to click on Scrum and I can click OK. But Before I do that I want to draw your attention to Kanban. I will be doing a follow-up video after this one for Kanban. Please check back in a few days or subscribe to my YouTube channel. So I'm going to switch this methodology to Scrum. You'll notice when I press OK that a new ribbon is going to appear in the ribbon. It's going to be called Scrum. Uh -huh. So here's my new Scrum ribbon that's just appeared. OK, so we're ready to go. The first thing you need to do is review your sprints. You know, when are the dates of your sprints? How long are your sprints? First thing you need to do is set that up. To do that, I'm going to click on Manage. So here we can see all of the sprints. Now you can see my, what Microsoft Project does is it breaks out all of the sprints into two weeks. Two weeks is the default. You cannot change the default, it's always two weeks. Microsoft, if you're watching this, please, I would recommend that you update the Project Options dialog for Microsoft Project to allow you to select a default duration for the length of your sprints. I've searched all the way through it, it's not there. So unfortunately you're stuck with a two week default duration, but that is kind of the standard. But just for the purpose of the demonstration, I'm going to show you how to change it. So I'm going to come into Sprint 1, I'm going to change it to be one week as opposed to two. And I'm going to do the same for all of my sprints. What you'll realize, though, is the finish date of my project is currently set to May 8th. But because I've just come through and switched out my uh, two-week sprints to one week, I've decreased the finish date each time. So you can see my with the sprints alone, I'm going to finish in March. That's not right. I need to be finishing in May. And because I switched them down from two to one, we lose that. However, I found a way to fix that. It's kind of kludgy, but if you just click on this finish date kind of drop down here, it does actually refresh the page. And you can see now it's built out more sprints to carry us through the end of the project. So I can come in again and change these to be one week, one week, one week, one week. And I could go through and do the rest of them as well. But I'm not going to do that. You understand how to do it? For the purpose of the demo, I'm going to press OK. So we set our sprints. We've got sprints carrying us through the end of the project. Good stuff. What I'm going to do now is put my tasks into the relevant sprints. To do that, I'm going to click on the planning drop down and I'm going to select sprint planning board 
All right, so what this is going to do, it's going to show me all the sprints across the top of the screen. You can see them there. Good stuff, just as we outlined in our manage. When we were managing the sprints, we outlined around 9 to 10. Here they all are. Next thing I can do is actually move my tasks into the sprints. So here we go. I'm just going to come in and put these tasks. They are running in chronological order. So I'm going to just come in and put these in sprint one. And you can see you can actually pull them out of order if you like. You can, it really is just drag and drop. I'm going to put some in sprint two. You can miss ones. You can move them around. You can do whatever you like. You can move in between. It really is completely up to you what you do here. So you can see not really in any chronological order here, but I'm just putting them in sprints, as you can see. All right, so we've got some tasks in sprints. That is kind of a lot of work, you know, to move every single task into various sprints. That would be, require quite a bit. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the drop down again, and I'm going to click on Sprint Planning Sheet. Sprint Planning Sheet. So what we can see here is the task in chronological order and you can see which sprint they're in. So as a result of the drag and drop operation, I can see that it put the task into various sprints. You can see these are all in one. This one is it didn't get selected. Maybe I could put that into sprint two, like so. So I think that it's going to be a much easier way if you if your schedule is in chronological order and you're actually doing the sprints in chronological order to come in and just kind of do it like this. So I'm just going to come in and make this sprint two kind of drag down a little bit, control D on the keyboard for fill down. And maybe this one's all sprint three here. Oops. Sprint three, not just three. Drag down, control D, and you get the idea. Alright, so that's another way to put your task into sprints. And if we go back to the sprint planning board, you'll see the results of that. A little bit more organized this time. Let's come back to the sprint, sprint planning sheet. What I want to do is show you the other columns that we're seeing in here. So the name of the task, no further definition there. We see how many work hours are available for that particular task. So how many work hours have been estimated. The board status, we're going to come back to that. The resource name, so the people working on that task. The task summary, this is the summary task associated with this particular task. So as opposed to having this broken out into different summary tasks, it's just a list of all the tasks and you can see the summary here in the summary column. Deadline date, that is actually just the, you know, the original, it's been there for a while now, the deadline date. It just allows you to apply a date, which by if that task goes past the deadline date, you'll, be in, you'll get a warning on the schedule in the indicators column saying this task goes past its deadline date and it'll also add that task to the critical path as well. So really nice feature if you've got a deadline for a task and you need to make sure that you're tracking it and if it goes past it you want to be made aware of it the deadline date is a great one for that you have the agile column the agile column is used to specify whether this particular task will be added to the agile views or not so it could be that you're managing agile uh, you know in this in this case you're doing scrum but it could be stuff that's outside of the scrums like you know management tasks or other unrelated tasks you could switch this to no and they won't appear in the sprints. All right, next view. I'm going to click on the sprint drop down and I'm going to click on current sprint sheet. Current sprint sheet. So, what this view should do is show me everything that's happening this week in the current week. Well, right now it's December 12th and there is nothing happening this week. Why is that? Probably because my project is scheduled to start January 1st. Ah, that's why. At this point, I'm actually going to remove the timeline just to get it out of the way to save the really say on screen. So what I'm going to do is show you how to trick Microsoft Project to making you think that it is a particular date. And this is a handy trick if you want to kind of look out into the future all right, on week five of the project, where are we going to be? Or what, what activities do we currently have scheduled for that particular week's set of sprints? Uh, sorry, that sprint. All right, so to do that, you can click on project information from the project ribbon. 
you see current date here. I'm actually going to go out to January 1st. We're going to trick Microsoft Project to make it think that today's date is January 1st. So we're not tricking anything. This is a feature of Microsoft Project. It allows you to use the change the current date for what if purposes. I'll press OK. Now I do need to reload the view. I need to do it again. Just click uh, current sprint sheet and then yep it reloads and now it's showing me everything for sprint one. Remember when we set up sprint one we said the very start of the project for the first week January 1st through the end of that week. Alright so here we see the current sprint. Let me show you again. If I go out to the second week of the project, let's go to the 8th of January and press OK. And again, I do need to reload the view. And it's going to say it's Sprint 2 activities now. Great. So, you know, for what if purposes, you can go out and look at the different sprints. That's a really handy trick there. So, I'm actually going to switch back now to January 1st. And we're going to take a look at the first sprint. Sprint 1. Um, so, again, switch back to my current sprint sheet. Let's take a look at the columns. So, this everything is happening. We have the name, the work for each task. Nothing's changed there. Board status. Ah, okay. So, let's take a look at this now. Backlog, up next, in progress, or done. Ah, so when you're looking at a particular, when you're working on a sprint, this is going to be really handy. So, when we're actually live, we're working, we're going to be putting things as in progress. We can also put things as next up. We can use backlog, and then when it's complete, we can make it done. Just for the purpose of this, I'm going to say this one's up next, and this one is in progress, right from the current sprint sheet. Again, we have the resource names, summary task, deadline. We've already explained those columns, nothing new here. Perfect, all right. So what I want to show you is another way. We have current sprint board. And the same view, just kind of turned on its edge, and it's more visual drag and drop, much the same as the sprint planning board. But this is different. This is one individual sprint and we can now manage the work. So the way I see this is as a project manager you're going to be in here each week in the current sprint board and you're going to be moving these current tasks for the current sprint around on the board. So you know we've got in progress, next up, and maybe we've got something that's done. You know, we've got all the different tasks. You can even add a new column here. I could put this as um, ready. If that was another status that we like to use, and I could move things into there as well. Or maybe trash pile. We're not doing it, right? We decided not needed. Whatever kind of statuses you like to use in your company, you can add those here really quickly and easily, and use it straight away. Um, so we can see next up in progress ready. So. Right now we're kind of looking out into the future, but this is how you will manage your work on a week-to-week -week basis. So each week you'll come in, you'll click on the current sprint board. You'll be managing your work really nicely and visually, and I bet this is how you're working today. Just maybe this is a more enhanced way of doing it. What I want to show you though is when things are done, you can look at the individual project schedule as well. So for defined current positioning and gaps, what we should be seeing is that this particular task should be complete. But it's not. It's in the done pile, but it's not. Hmm, very strange. Well, actually, it's not strange at all. What you need to do is status these tasks. You cannot move them to done and, and, and Microsoft Project will know that, that is complete. You can still status them. So a recommendation for myself would be, once they're done, click on them. Go to the task ribbon and click 100%. When you do that, you will notice in the top right hand corner that it has a check mark. When something's in progress, you know, if it's started, I usually do 25. If we're almost done, I'll do either 50 or 75. So if it started, 25. For halfway through, 50%. Almost done, 75. Done, 100. So in progress, how much are we in progress? Well, maybe we're 50%. Great. It won't not uh, notate anything here. If you flip back to the Gantt chart view, you would see that. In fact, you could probably show a diff, uh, other information in here as well if you wanted. You can right click and you can also 
mark task is 100% complete. Pretty nice. All right, so you know when things are done each week, you'll be coming in here and marking them as done. So as you can see, these new features have redefined the way that you can use Microsoft Project. The best thing about it is we can use these new features or we can use these new features and replace the way that we we're working before. Or we can use these features in addition to what we were doing before. So if you're managing schedules in more of a traditional way, waterfall, you can do that as well as this, all in the same schedule. Let me show you something. I'm going to go back to the Scrum ribbon and I'm going to click on All. This is one last view that I want to show you. So we can see all of the tasks, the sprints that they're a part of, their board status, who's working on it, the task summary, and the deadlines. You can pretty much work in here for your entire project schedule. You can come down to the end and you can add new tasks. You can put it in a sprint. You can say whether, you know, when, when you're actually managing the, that week, you could say whether it's ready or backlog, whatever the case may be. You can also add additional columns in here, story points, whatever you want to add, you can add that. These are the out of the box features that I've shown you today. Please check back for more videos. The next video I'm going to be showing you is on the Kanban features within Microsoft Project. Please leave comments, subscribe to my channel, and if you have any questions, please reach out directly. Thank you very much, and thank you for watching.